At this place in history, we're in Enosburg Falls with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What are we doing today? So we are going to check out a time capsule of life in early Vermont right here on the green in Enosburg Falls. So we're going to go inside, talk to a couple members of the Enosburg Historical Society, and they're going to tell us all about Abe's cabin. When was this cabin built? About 1830, 1840. Yeah, and I heard that it was maybe covered up for a little while. Well, actually, it started out as a sheep herder's cabin. Oh. And across the street, which is Lincoln Park now, that's where the sheep meadow was. Huh. And then the demand for merino wool waned. The ladies in town wanted a fancy park, and so it was moved over to this location, and covered with clapboards. And when was it discovered as such? <laughs> Probably around uh, 19, 10, 12, something in there. Right, and then somebody saw that it had happened to go upstairs and saw a hole in the plaster and realized it was chinks and logs. Wow. And, but forgot all about it because he was a small child. 1975, the last person who lived here moved out and they were going to tear it down. The small boy, now a grown man, remembered that and uh, said, I think that was a log cabin. And they started taking the plaster off and they started taking uh, the outside off and it was. So can you give us sort of the lay of the land, describe the rooms that are in this cabin? Well, we have the bedroom, which would have probably been used by the parents. Off in a log cabin, 14 to 15 people could sleep in a cabin of this size. We have an upstairs where the children had been slept and you can almost imagine the parents hitting the roof uh, uh, over their bed to quiet the children down. <laughs> like a big sleepover every night. <laughs> right. People are also fascinated by the corn cob mattress, the corn husk mattress, and especially when I tell them when they gathered up the corn husks, they may have picked up a little garter snake or a mouse in there. <laughs> and um, your bed may move. Oh my. <laughs> Everything in here is hands-on. We tell the kids, the adults, Pick it up, try it out, but we don't recommend that you put that fork into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but we do let them, encourage them to pick things up, to try them out, heft them. The pencil sharpener just intrigues them no wow. end. Um, that is quite the pencil it's sharpener. It's elaborate. Oh, yes. <laughs> it would, you would put it down on the, it would be bolted down, and then there's the pa sandpaper here, and then they turn the crank and hold the pencil up there and they sharpen their pencils. My, they go through a lot of pencils. Wow, it's sandpaper. <laughs> sure. <That's Yeah>. sure. <laughs> and so the story here is um, having people being able to step back in time and experience a certain time period. Absolutely. Right? Everything was functional. Yeah. They had nothing unnecessary. This is open in the summertime. Yes. When can people come and visit and how do they, how do they find you? Well, we are open on Tuesday evenings. Uh, when we have our band concert in the middle of the summer. Uh, or open on special occasions like June Dairy Day and that kind of thing. But if anybody wanted to, to come and see us and it wasn't the regular, they can give us a call and uh, Linda and I would be glad to come over and open it up and have some fun. At this place in history,